This episode is going to be talking about things that can be very controversial. Well, yeah, controversial. Uh, yeah. We are going to try to keep politics out of it as much as possible, but mm -hmm. it's going to slip in. And it might anger some people, and I, I might anger you in a good way. Uh, yeah, you might find some, find some agreement with it yeah. as well. So just a heads up, it will be, um, I'm not going to use the word triggered, <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it might bring reactions. So welcome to Unearthly Upstate, Patreon edition. Mm-hmm. Patreon I'm, edition, yes. I'm Mari. I'm Matthew. And today we're going to be discussing Salisbury Manor. And mm. we are going to, I like I explained in the intro, we're going to have to explain a, mm -hmm. a, a dark spot on humanity basically a, a dark dark spot uh, in uh, uh, american history indeed oh a lot world of history world that, history yeah yeah that uh, uh some people uh, like to deny or mm -hmm. like to split hairs about and uh and part of that has to do with uh endangered servitude yeah but we'll get to why we pick salisbury manor right now mm-hmm uh, near Leeds, New York, there is a stone farmhouse known as Salisbury Manor. I'll say right now, if you see pictures of it, it's really not that impressive. You know, yeah, to yeah. apply the term manor to this house, yeah. it seems like a misnomer. Know, misnomer. <laughs> some sort. It, it, it is a large <laughs> stone building. Okay. It, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. That was added on to from its yeah. original structure, and it has uh, some it's interesting varying yeah. Yeah. Uh, styles of architecture. Yes. Yeah. The, the farmhouse was built in 1730 by Francis Salisbury for, the, for his oldest son, Abraham. The house itself isn't that special unless you're interested in the mixture of ar architectural styles. But if you're on the road near the house at night, you might hear the cries and screams of a young woman. You might even see a large ghostly horse near a stone wall. Sometimes you can catch the glimpse of, a, of the young woman staring at Salisbury Manor. This is reputed to be the ghost of a young servant girl who was killed on the road outside the manor. The why and the how changes with every story, but there are a few consistencies. The oldest version of the story I could find is from the Historic Catskills by Vetter J. Van Vetchen, publication date 1922. There is an old story of William Salisbury, the grandson of General Salisbury, who was born in the mansion of 1705, but who at the time lived in the house built by his father in 1730 or 1731, which has only a foundation of truth. The story tells of murder, conviction, and remorse, a suspended sentence, and Salisbury wearing a silken cord about his neck as a reminder of his ultimate fate. The true story is as follows. Salisbury had a bound girl, Anna Dorothea Swartz, who persisted in visiting a house of a family of bad reputation, and in those days the master of a bound boy or girl was given the absolute control over them and was responsible for their conduct. This family lived at the foot or second turn of what is now known as Fillion's Hill on the land of Newkirk, now Schaefer's, and on this occasion refused to return with their master. Mr. Salisbury tied one end of the rope around the girl's waist and to the other his own, a foolish but not unnecessarily wicked act, for he was as much danger as she, and nearly shared her fate. As the horse was valued at three pounds at the indictment, it was a very likely an old one. The horse, however, became frightened. Salisbury was dragged from his back, and the girl was killed. Salisbury merely gave himself up and was indicted for murder, but the case never came to trial. His lawyer was a James Barco of Cairo, up opposite the entrance to Newkirk Farm, before the ro state road was built, there was a large boulder known as Spook Rock, and here is where the girl is supposed to have met her death. And here at midnight, on the anniversaries of her death, a huge gray horse with a rider and a girl peer to the superstitious town folks. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. 
few phrases I want you to keep in mind here. Um, bound yeah, girl. We need to break this down. Yeah. A little bit. But I'm going to read the modern version, and then we're going to go mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Okay. So hold on. The a more modern version. The count comes from the website greatnortherncatskills.com. The manor is also known for an event that is much more sinister. The murder of a young servant girl named Anna Dorothea Swartz. Now, it's interesting, the spelling's different. Swartz in the original had a Z, this one has an S. Whose life ended in the manor's ground in 1755. The records show that Anna worked for, worked for the owner of the manor, <laughs> yeah. William Salisbury. Salisbury was known as a tyrant who treated his staff terribly. Hmm. One night, tired of during abuse, Anna tried to escape. Salisbury gave chase, caught her. He tied her to the back of the horse, dragged her back to the farm, ripping her body to shreds along the way. William Salisbury was found guilty of murder, but he bribed the judge and spent his sentence until he turned 99. Shortly after the trial, the citizens of Leeds claimed to see her ghost sitting on the wall outside Salisbury Manor. Others saw a huge ghost horse riding by the manor, now thought to be haunted, and could hear the galloping hooves of the horse and the screams of Anna. Okay. Alrighty. Basically, one account is pretty, I think, accurate in describing Anna's position in the house. Uh-huh. And the other account kind of glosses that over, but ups her death, ups the gory uh-huh. of her death. Um, yeah. Both accounts, so are, there are similarities between the both accounts. Um, William actions in getting his, his Anna back. Uh-huh. Resulted in her death because she was crushed by the horse when the horse became spooked. Those are the pretty much the facts. Yeah. Okay. The, the, where it gets cloudy uh-huh. is why he was let off. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Later, trails of sale of bribery. As you can tell, kind of from the first one, it was kind of like a eh situation. Uh-huh. And we're going to explain why probably the older tale is probably more accurate. Uh-huh. In what really happened. So. Right. The second story about William's age at death can be disproven by a quick genealogical research. William, the son of Francis and Maria Van Gosbeck, Salisbury, was baptized in Kingston December 25th, 1714, and died in 1801. Mm-hmm. He was nowhere near 99 years old. <laughs> no, no. The information that stays the same was that the interesting point in the modern tale seems to soften the more uncomfortable points. <laughs> Namely, what type of servant was Anna? And at a best guess, she was an indentured servant. Okay, here's where we're going to get into so, people that want to split hairs between indentured servitude and slavery. I'm just going to say they're both slavery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, slavery and all, but name. The main difference is an indentured servant who had a contract, but as we're going to discuss, the contracts were basically worthless. Yeah. An indentured servant was a person that owed money, such as to a ship captain, mm-hmm. for passage. That was requ- They were required to work off the debt or work a certain time period in order to pay off that debt. On the surface, it seems like a good deal. Until the late 18th century in British North America... Many poor immigrants used the indentured servitude as a way to gain passage to the colonies. This practice continued until the early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Some would argue it's still going on to this day. Some forms of indentured servitude still exist. Yes, um, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you want to split hairs between white and black slavery, um, black slavery was ended with the 13th Amendment in 1863. Mm Mm-hmm. But this form of white slavery wasn't mm-hmm. ended until 1910 with the Mann Act, M-A-N-N. Mm-hmm. Uh, l- look it up. Mm-hmm. Um, Mann was a uh, he, he was a United States uh, congressman, mm-hmm. uh, James Robert Mann of Illinois, and uh, he he introduced the, the bill that became law on uh, June 25th, 1910, finally ending. Uh, yeah, it was called the White Slave Traffic Act, yeah. uh, and so yeah. But anybody who you know reads up on the subject will mm-hmm. tell you it, it's still going on. It's still going on in America too. I that you every so often you hear horror mm-hmm. stories, yeah. even yeah. along the uh, no. even along the uh, so-called Barbary Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
there's still that sort of thing going on. Oh, yeah, it's, um, this is not something that's gone away just from an act of Congress. When, uh, when Somali pirates mm -hmm. uh, capture fishing, fishing boats, uh, they when they steal them, uh, they, they not, only, not only steal the boat, they, they steal the crew as well. Mm -hmm. And they sell them to people who... There's a market for this thing still. Yeah. Yeah. And they sell the crew mm -hmm. as well. Yep. It's, it's, aston it's astonishing that in the, the you know in the 21st century this kind of thing is still going on. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Indentured servitude also used in New England and Long Island as a way to try to control and assimilate the Native Americans. So, mm -hmm. um, and in an episode in our second season, we are basically, if it wasn't for uh, what happened with the Palatine Germans. Mm -hmm. who basically, it was an indentured servitude version of indentured servitude that happened to them, we would not have that entire section of the Mohawk Valley, <laughs> yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, the German plants. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it did it did affect history in a way. Um, yeah, that was an entire population yeah. of people. It just wasn't, you know, you always um, uh, hear about individuals mm -hmm. being... Uh, drawn into this uh, form of slavery, oh, good. Not, entor not entire populations. A good example, although it's a fictional example, is mm -hmm. if you go to the Townsend's YouTube channel, look up the historical interpreter Ma who, whose character is Maggie. Mm -hmm. She's an Irish immigrant whose story is of one who is indentured. And they did an entire episode where she does her entire spiel about being an indentured servant. Mm -hmm. And the interesting about, thing about her story was I watched her story before reading up on Salisbury Manor. Her persona mm -hmm. has a similar thing happen to her as Anna did, where she was sold off as like the third or fourth person who bought her contract. Here's the big difference. Indentured servitude, it was the contract that was passed. Mm -hmm. Technically, they didn't own the person. They owned the contract that the person had to Fulfill. A sneaky way of getting around. Exactly. Keeping, being exactly. able to alter the contract Again, like in I say, order to keep the hair, person in bondage. We're splitting hairs, but it basically boils down to treating mm -hmm. people as things. Yeah. You know? um, but yep. same thing happened to her persona is the guy became mad about her, tied her to the back of horse, and when she fell and collapsed, dragged her because he didn't want to stop, and then he got out and beat her. So... I don't know if this story was what inspired her persona, or did she find other stories in her research very similar? So this may have been a very common discipline with some of these, you mm -hmm. know, contract owners. All right. Mm -hmm. Prior to 1775, there were upwards of 550,000 immigrants to the colonies of these 55,000 were involuntary prisoners. Yeah, they were well, sending most of them off to Australia. Exactly. So. Uh, estimates uh, of up to 48% of the rest of these were immigrants. Uh, well, by name. But they were indentured servants, and 75% mm -hmm. of those uh, were under the age of 25. Mm -hmm. And the terms of the contract uh, would last from one to seven years, although they were not paid. Okay, that, but, well, that's basically what slavery is. You work for nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, the person that held their debt was expected to provide food, clothing, shelter, uh, but how good the items provided was up to the person that held the debt, and mm -hmm. if a, an indentured servant was lucky, they were given a new set of clothes and allowed to leave. And some did get a small mm -hmm. stipend at the end, but it, it was uh, more likely... Uh, they wouldn't uh, survive to see the end of their mm -hmm. contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a special uh, form of indentured servitude for people uh, born in the colonies, uh, bound apprentices. Uh, these were orphans or children from poor families who were uh, ordered by the court to work as an apprentice on, until a certain age. So that could have been Anna. She could have mm -hmm. came from a poor family. The family owed a debt. So the court basically ordered her to go work for William. And you could understand why she wanted to get out of that. Absolutely. You know, I mean, God, she, uh, they never really give her age, but I always assumed she was probably mm -hmm. 16 or 17. Right. She was very young, so. Indentures could not marry without the permission of the owner. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, physical punishments were often brutal and used, uh, resulting in death. And these punishments were upheld by the courts. So you see why he got off right there. Yeah, and female servants could have their term lengthened if they'd become pregnant. Now you can see where uh, it, it would be lucrative for an, uh, a slave owner to mm. you know, get their indentured yeah. servant per, uh, pregnant in order to uh, extend her, yeah. uh, the, the, her length of time. And their, their contracts could be bought and sold or auctioned off as property, but the indentured servant was not... Uh, considered property, only their contract was. But it was one of those, you know, damn if you do, damn if you mm -hmm. don't, because if your contract's sold out, you've got to still fulfill your contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is, uh, like yeah. I said, we're just splitting hairs at this point. <laughs> you know? Runaway, runaways were common. Mm -hmm. uh, advertisements offering rewards for the return of servants were common. Uh, standard penalty was an uh, extra service of twice the time the master had lost, uh, and a possible weapon, of course. Okay. And uh, in New York, slavery was abolished. Uh, in in New York State, mm -hmm. uh, slavery was abolished in 1799. The slaves at the time became indentured servants, and in 1727, New York granted all indentured servants freedom. Yeah. So but, it continued for quite some time. But then there wasn't there, there, until uh, the aforementioned Mann Act. There wasn't any federal. Uh, there law. wasn't any federal law. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's. People who know Irish history yeah. in America mm -hmm. will tell you this was extremely common with the yeah. Irish immigrants coming over. Mm -hmm. um, some British immigrants as well. If you were poor, this is how you got to America. Mm -hmm. um, and when I kind of made that quip, I said, yeah, we were in Australia. Yeah, because they were sending all their prisoners to Australia, most of them anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we got some. But yeah, the indentured servitude was, it is... It is a part of history that's very uncomfortable to talk about. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. But yet, it's something that has to be done. Because uh, it is, and like I said, the Irish in America, you look at that background. Mm. There was a reason the gangs in New York happened. There was a yeah. reason Tammany Hall happened. It all came out of a lot of this. Yes. Um, and uh, I remember I in college, I had a professor who taught Irish history in America. He also taught labor history in America. Mm -hmm. And he regaled us with a story about how he's on the FBI watch list mm -hmm. because he taught those classes. Yeah. And it, because Irish were very involved in a lot of the labor disputes in the early 20th century, mm -hmm. um, which were again rising up against very similar practices, uh, again, oh, yeah. again, only in name. Uh, with a lot of the big companies, I mean, mm -hmm. a good example I can think of just off the top of my head is if you work for a company that provides you with your house, they would also provide you stuff from the company store, which you would just charge when you went down there and said, mm -hmm. oh, I need whatever, whatever, and you would charge it. Well, if your paycheck didn't cover what you owed, well, guess what? You had to work more. Yeah. And so it basically became the same thing. And, and, with and, interest. And it indebted type of servitude differently, yeah, exactly. but it was what basically happens, the same thing. What still happens to the coal miners yeah, in, yeah. in America. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, this practice still continues. Some places, and more obviously it's occurring, mm -hmm. we still hear horror stories now coming out of America. So often a few years back, uh, the New York State Fair, this one particular vendor, yeah. busted majorly. <laughs> yeah. He was using illegal immigrants yep. and basically... Uh, was forcing them to work like what was it eighty hours a week or something? Yeah. It was an ungodly amount of hours. They were living in like one room trailers, just piled on top of mm -hmm. each other, and uh, they couldn't say anything. They couldn't reach out to him. But one, they were illegal, and he was using that against mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Two, if any of them did anything wrong, he just you know basically would threaten him more and everything. Mm -hmm. So he, he was scaring them to death. It was finally, I think, the health department, if I remember the story right, was yeah. alerted because one of them got sick with mm -hmm. a disease, and they he got raided, and they found out he'd been doing mm -hmm. this all throughout the state. And, yeah, that's similar. I mean, he, he wasn't mm -hmm. using a contract as much as, well, I'll send you back to, you know, I'm going to let him know you're illegal. Exactly, you yeah. know, And these people were, you know, too terrified to say anything and this in turn would undermine the bargaining power yeah 
of the paid employees yeah. that were on his payroll. Mm -hmm. and because, well, well, I could always fire you and get more illegal. Yeah, and, and not only that, he was barely paying them anything. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. he, he's keeping them off the books because they were illegals. Yep. So, you know, he was barely paying them. So, guess where all the money went? Right into his pocket. Yeah, in his pocket. He yeah. wasn't giving them the proper food. He wasn't giving yeah. proper shelter. He wasn't giving proper health care. He didn't care. It was They were just bodies to him. Exactly. Uh, and, and there it goes. Treating people as things. Basically, <laughs> okay, this is what, it's bad, people. Bad. I don't it's, care it's, what name you call it. It's bad. It's all bad, folks. It's bad. I mean, I want somebody coming, you know, write an angry comment to us. Well, well, the slavery in the South was worse. No, it's all it's, bad. It's all awful. <laughs> it's just. It's terrible. <laughs> okay. Don't stop typing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's. Can we all agree? No matter mm -hmm. what the name is, no matter how legal mm -hmm. it is, it's yeah. bad. It's all bad. Period. That's the end of my rant. <laughs> because because you're treating the person as a thing, and it mm -hmm. all it all boils down to the the same kind of cruelty exactly exactly yeah. and uh um yeah. i know you got a list of books well there, i do have a list but i wonder if here. we should just put that up on the well i'd like to mention them anyway well okay okay uh the first one here is author by uh, uh francis brooks mm -hmm. and the title is barbarian cruelty an eyewitness account of white slavery under the moors mm -hmm. of course the aforementioned man act mm -hmm. uh, by emma goldman uh white gold uh, History of White Slavery in the Middle East by uh, Giles Milton. Mm -hmm. White Slavery in the Barbary States by Charles Sommer. Uh, and he also penned uh, White Slaves, African Masters, and Black Slave Owners, uh, written by Larry Coger. And uh, White Cargo, The Forgotten History of Britain's White Slaves in America by yeah. Don Jordan. Yeah, and so yeah, the example I gave, uh, you know, it still continues mm -hmm. uh, to this day, and and it is, well, it's a black spot. But going mm -hmm. back to the Salisbury Manor whole thing, yeah, he was let off because yeah. the disciplines were considered appropriate exactly. for Anna's situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, under the uh, under the time and place, it was yeah. uh, considered a okay. Yes, you know to to behave this. So like he didn't this. have to bribe a judge. No. He didn't have to do anything. He, he was protected by the law at that point. Yeah, absolutely. He held a contract. And to tell you the truth, which, you know, I think her death was accidental. It, granted, he was stupid for tying her to the back of the horse. Well, you know about that. Yeah. You see, I, I wonder if, circling this back to some of the other stories we've mm -hmm. done, uh, Bernard Hatch. Yeah. You know, when, when he tied that woman to the back of his Plymouth. I wouldn't, it sounds very similar. Yeah. It's like a very similar treatment. And when you hear about people being chained mm -hmm. to the back of pickup trucks and drugged down the road, you know, horrible murders. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, this is a theme. It is. Among it these, is. this kind of mindset. Again, treating people like things. They're tying exactly. to the back of a horse mm -hmm. like you tie a, a, a cow or another horse to it, take Like the livestock. Horse. Like livestock, Considered yeah. livestock. And, yeah, I would highly and recommend people, uh, if they want to get a, not a true first person account but a good um first person interpretation of what it was look up townsend's mm -hmm. on what youtube and look up maggie's it's about an hour long but she goes into all the different experiences that an indentured servant could have had in the u.s some were good some were bad i mean her for the example she gave her, her first the guy who first owned her contract was actually a good mm -hmm. situation he treated his indentured servants very well um, but he died. Yeah. So now he owes money to people. His estate owes money to people. Well, what does he have? He has all I'd, these contracts. I bolt. I just... <laughs> we, people did. I people just, did. I would that's, get the hell out of there. That's probably what Anna was trying to do. Yeah. It wouldn't be surprising me that this house of bad reputation was actually a place that helped indentured servants disappear. Mm -hmm. You know, um... They would happen. They would, like you said, literally bolt. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was mentioned here, but the children's one was supposed to end when they were eighteen. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yes, they would put right. they would put the children in indentured servitude too. Mm -hmm. Let's say um, you're a fam you're a poor family in Ireland and you're losing everything. Mm -hmm. So you sign up with a ship captain, and they would put everyone that under a contract. Everyone. Yeah. It didn't matter your age. 
So yep. you would have young children having to fill, fulfill these contracts. Entire but, families. But their contracts were supposed to end at 18. Right. I'm not sure what the loopholes were for them if... You know, by the time they turned 17, all of a sudden, oh, no, we got to add all this time on. Right, and the captain yeah. would make their trip mm -hmm. to the colonies more lucrative by busting those families up, yeah. by putting separate contracts on mm -hmm. each family member, and, and those families would get busted up. Yep. And the reason they were called indentured is because when they wrote the contract, after everyone signed it or made their mark, mm -hmm. they would cut it so it had, like, um, a, notch. a notch in it. Mm -hmm. And so the servant would get one, and the right. owner of the contract would or get the other. Or an indent. Or, and you could right. put them together to match. Mm -hmm. So this indent was mm -hmm. what made them an indentured right. servant. But like I said, we're just splitting hairs at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, but it's interesting how the story, I think, the original, the oldest one I could find from 1922... Made no bones about the fact that Anna was a bound servant. Yeah. May, you know, mentions even mm -hmm. in there that, you know, he, this was totally expected to him to treat the servant this way. And then you get to the more modern telling, which she's now, it sounds like she's a paid servant and his staff. Uh, they quotation. totally brush yeah. over. Put that in air quotes. Staff. They totally brush over the realistic horror and bring up <laughs> the, the gory horror. Like I said, again, I, the real horror is the real um, horror was the treatment <laughs> of Anna. Um, yeah, like I, said, I would not be surprised if she was trying to run away, and mm -hmm. that's where she was, and and the law was in his favor at and that if, point. And if you die under those circumstances, those people who are like to believe in ghosts think mm -hmm. you know those are uh, those are circumstances that are ripe for the creation of something like a poltergeist or a revenging ghost. And do you blame uh, them? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, None. I, I hope Anna's Anna sitting out there all. still staring at that manor. Because, staring yeah. at that manor. She wants to burn that place down. Yeah. You know, and it, if that was one, the way he treated one servant underneath. Oh, oh well, God, how, how many he others did he? Yeah. Too, yeah. You know, he treated his neighbors. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. And, yeah. And that sort of thing. But... It's interesting how now in modern times they hang gloss over. Probably, probably abuse the help down at the sutlers too. Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, they gloss over the fact that oh, she yeah. was an indentured servant. They gloss over this, and the but yet the they, gloss. yet they embellish how she died. Right. To me, yes, I do think her death was an accident. I mean, he was like the first count said he was stupid to right exactly to tie her to the back. Uh, although they kind of think, oh, that was still kind of okay. It was just kind of stupid. He tied himself to her. Well, not okay in any respect. Mm -hmm. But the horse, you know, the horse bolt had probably trampled her, and that's what killed her. Yeah, yeah that was accidental. But it, and he mm -hmm. did turn himself in in the original story. But they couldn't charge him with anything. He, according to the law, he did nothing wrong. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. so this whole other aspect of, oh, he bribed the judge, and oh, he was so guilty, he had to wear the silken cord around his neck to remind him of his guilt. No, that never mm -hmm. happened. He he Hell got no. let off and lived in ripe old age, and that because yep. the law was in not his to favor. ninety nine, but yeah, yeah. So the law was in his favor. Mm -hmm. yep. But as you study history at this point, you run into this a lot, especially in New York State. Mm -hmm. And I do Especially find it the original thirteen colonies. Yes, yeah. I do find it interesting that you know slavery mm -hmm. uh, was abolished in seventeen ninety, but then they became indentured servants. And like we described, really, what was the difference? Oh, you had a contract, so that contract was worthless. Yeah, basically, you, you, because it you could know. be altered at any moment by yeah. the contract holder. So, yeah. yeah. So in eighteen twenty seven, when New York went finally went, no, no more. You know. Yeah, eighteen twenty seven. They finally said, Yeah, enough. You know, yeah, we yeah. could get into a whole political thing about minimum wage being type of indentured servitude. That there was a lot we mm -hmm. could argue, mm -hmm. um, but oh, we're going to leave that to people listening to this, and I don't <laughs> want to go into it because I might go ba off. Basically, employers are saying, uh, "We're going to stop there." <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, okay. Before, before both of us go off. Anyway, all right. Is there uh, anything else? <laughs> no, I think that's about it. Um, so, yeah, that's the uh, story of Salisbury Manor. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have an address. I'm sure if you show up at Leeds and ask people where it is, they'll let you know. It mm -hmm. is on the, it is on the Register of Historical 
places, so there is um, an address somewhere. I just could not find it. I tried again. We had to re-record this. And, uh, no, it's not there. Oh, okay. All right. So, but it's in Leeds, New York, so if you do want to see it and maybe see Anna, that where to go. Mm-hmm. So, well, that was our... Thanks, you. Thank kind you of right. a heavy Patreon <laughs> episode <laughs> this month. Thank you for listening to yet another extra ghastly podcast. Yep. Uh, have mm-hmm. a good one. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Unearthly Upstate. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, and on our webpage. We are also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Sprecher, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcasts, and CastBox. Please like, share, and view on your favorite platform. Unearthly Upstate is an Animator Liar production. The show is produced by Mari and Matt Minette, with purring provided by Honey and Lloyd. Research and writing by Mari Minette. Music is by Kevin McCloud, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Unless otherwise stated in the episode, the places mentioned in the broadcast are not paid or contact us for any type of promotion. Please check out our webpage for credit and sources for the episode. Thank you.